What is up, everybody? Welcome to another day of Kitbash 3D Live. Joshua Gilbreth in the house. What's up, Joshua? Thank you for joining us. Uh, as many of you all probably know, we are coming to you today with a very special, special show, um, which we will talk about in a little bit. Uh, Mad Arts in the house. What up, Forrest Lamb? Sup, sup. Balls deep. <laughs> Hello. Um, Chris Bojan in the room. What up, Chris? Uh, Arthur says, all is good. Been waiting for another dose of awesomeness. Well, we um, are very pumped to have you all in the house with us. Um, simply Chenable, what is happening? Uh, thank you all for joining us today. We have Emmanuel Shu here again on the show, but for a very special thing. What up, E-Man? Hey, what's up? What's up, everybody? Um, we are... Uh, E-Man, you are in, in San Francisco, yeah? In your, yeah. your home lab? Um, yes, in my, in my home, yes. Um, and in a very foggy day, as usual. I love that. I wish we got, honestly, I wish we got more fog here in, in L.A. But uh, you can't, can't win them all. Yeah, well, <laughs> you got some other good things in L.A. I really, I, I dig the weather down there. It's really warm. I love that. Well, any, anytime you want, you can come down here. Yes, I, I need to make time for that. Um, well, as many of you all know in the chat, um, we, uh, we've got a super cool show today. Today is the very first How to Be a Professional Concept Artist with Emmanuel Shu. Um, and so, Iman, tell us uh, a little bit about um, uh, why, where the idea for this show came up. Well, I mean, it, it just... I've been receiving so many emails through the years and everybody asks the same question, you know, oh, you know, what is concept art? You know, what, you know, like is their idea of concept art is usually sometimes not even what it really is. And I keep having to explain it over and over and over again that I thought, you know, at some point it'd be nice to just let people know, you know, what it is, uh, you know, from at least an experienced person uh, and, you know, have it out there so that people can reference it. They can, uh, uh, you know, find information about it and, and make their own decision whether they want to do it or not. What do you but, think? Yeah. What do you think some of the most common misconceptions are about what people think concept art is, or what a concept? Well, artist I don't is? know. A lot of people they think, well, okay, you know, I want to be a concept artist in games because they think it's, you know, they love playing games. So I must love concept art. You know, and it's just, you know, it's just doing, uh, you know, just working on the games. You know, they, they don't even really have a clue as to how it works, what's expected of you, you know. And once they start knowing, they go, oh, um, either they go, uh, yeah, I'm out. Or they'll be like, okay, now I know what to study. And in, I know how to go. In the, the simplest way, what do you, how would you define concept art? So concept art is... It's really solving a problem or visualizing, uh, uh, visually visualizing what your director, art director, or whoever uh, is solving their problems with visuals. It's really just that simple. I mean, that's what concepts are. So, uh, uh, you know, however, uh, you know, the art director or the director or the production designer you know, however they respond, you know, some like sketchy stuff, some like really uh, fleshed out stuff, but it's just communicating using visuals and solving their problems. Would you say in, in a sense you're, you're creating the first look at the world? Uh, not necessarily. Sometimes, uh, sometimes in, you know, there's a lot of different phases. So sometimes, yes. Uh, sometimes you're at the very end where you have to solve a different set of problems. Uh, but, you know, you may not be the first to, to be, you know, on to that world, but, you know, it uh, depends on what phase you are, mm. I think, you know. Um, but, yeah. And the, the reason for concepting is, in, rather than just going all the way through it, is more like giving a blueprint to, to the, that the rest of, of the project will follow, right? Yeah, I mean, you know, if you have the beginning phases, you're, you know, you're trying to figure out, Again, helping the director visualize, you know, what they what they don't, you know, a lot of directors will come to you and go, well, you know, I, I, I like this kind of thing, but they have no idea what it is, and you have to help them visualize it, 
And let's say, you know, like you do that and then, um, you know, then, then it gets passed on to the other phases uh, to, to actually be, you know, uh, realized, you know, like in a real set or made into a game asset or whatever. So it, it goes through a lot of different phases. Mm. Um, and then in the end is the sort of the end product. So there's a lot of tie-in, like concept artists could fit in any of those stages. Yeah. And that's why it, it can get a little confusing. And that's why I want to do this because it's, you know, it's confusing. A lot of people, there's no, you can't go on the line and, and find information that says, okay, here are the stages. Here's what each stage needs, you know, in terms of like uh, their expectations, mm -hmm. and what skills you need to have. Uh, and, and, you know, like uh, somebody in, in, uh, who charges a lot of money uh, may be on project shorter, so you only get to do this phase. Mm -hmm. You don't get to do the full phase. And we'll get into all that in detail yeah. later. But, you know, that ties back to why, I, you know, why is, because there's so many things mm -hmm. uh, that a lot of people have no clue uh, that it's that wide. And I think, you know, we, we will, um, I'm so excited about this because we are going to, over um, the next couple months, really dissect the whole business side of concept art. Um, and I think doing this show is such a great um, thing to do. And I'm so happy that um, you, you had this idea and wanted to do this because it's, the, the hope here is that we can create a, a library um, and, a, and a real roadmap for people that can exist here in the live show and then and then also online um, from uh, someone who's been there, you know, someone who's who's gone down the road. Um, and yeah, we... I think also, why should it be just this information that nobody knows, this secret, you know? Uh, and and I, I watch a lot of people's streams and, uh, you know, when people talk and all that stuff, but it's a lot of little things here and then little things there. So like you said, tying it in and just putting it in one place and just making sure that people really have the right information uh, and they don't, you know, they don't shoot themselves in the foot, you know, at the beginning going down a path that they probably don't, didn't want to go down, you know? So. Yeah. Well, in, in case people out there um, don't know, oh, and let's, let's catch up on the, the chat a little bit. We got uh, Raja in the house. We got Quentin. Uh, Ian Bignair is here. What up, Ian? Uh, Forrest Lamb says a lot of pros say there is a gray area in the field of concept art. Um, that's why it's so hard to decipher the position. Um, really good point, Forrest. Um, and, and hopefully we'll be able to uh, make the gray area a little bit less gray um, as we go through some of the stuff. Um, Gavorker says uh, E man in the house. What up, uh, Gabriel? It's Gabriel Punsalong. You're uh, your opponent in the hey, kitness bash. <laughs> um, and uh, Mike Johnson's here, Simply Chinnable, um, Brandon, anybody, everybody, Mike Johnson's up. Um, thank you all very much for joining us. We are incredibly excited. Um, before we go any uh, another step, I just want to give a shout out to the chat. Um, at any point, please um, participate in the chat, comment, um, throw your thoughts in. Um, and let's make this an interactive thing. These videos will live on on YouTube later, but now in the live atmosphere, the reason we do this live is that um, we want you all to, to be able to have a voice on this show. Um, so everyone in the chat, thank you for uh, saying what up. And um, so, uh, Iman, tell us a little bit about um, your your background and your past. Can you walk us through how did um, how did you decide to get into concept art? So, okay, I mean, I'm a good example of somebody who just went through a lot of different uh, back and forth. Uh, I knew, I mean, I, I got into it quite by chance when I uh, graduated art school um, in interior architecture. And I was like, all right, well, I guess I'm doing that. But <laughs> I didn't know what I was doing. I had no idea. And back then, there was no real... Uh, it was the multimedia stuff, you know, and, and, and I had no idea what games really were, uh, you know, or film. Uh, so I, I got lucked out. I lucked out and, and they placed me into some kind of internship. And then I went to my first job interview. Can, uh, 
Can we talk a little bit about that? So, so from architecture school, they placed you into to. Well, I mean, you know, so I, I okay, so this is exactly what happened. I go into the office and I go, I need a job. You know, this is the the school, right? The the, the placement, you uh-huh. know, office thing. And, and I go, I need a job. Um, I'm done. I'm graduated. What do I do? Um, and and so they go, well, you know, there is this thing that kind of just came across, you know, some multimedia game thing. Do you know how to use a computer? Uh, <laughs> like it's back then, don't forget, it was just analog. I mean, I was doing blueprints on, you know, in a, you know, like a, a, I forgot even what they're called, but not on a computer, I'll tell you that. Yeah. My last semester at school, I did get like one computer, uh, you know, like a, a 3D modeling uh, class. Mm-hmm. So I said, oh yeah, I know how to use a computer. And I said, okay, well, you're going to the interview tomorrow. So I go, okay. And, the, and, and so I, I go home that night and I'm like, oh, I got to go, I got to, I got to bring a portfolio. So then I just take some, you know, schoolwork from the, uh, the 3D modeling class, render it really quickly, and then put it in floppy disks. <laughs> and floppy disks. My whole portfolio was in one floppy disk. <laughs> it had like maybe, you know, like six images. I brought them to work. And the guy looked at it and said, oh, um, yeah, okay. It looks like you can kind of do something and we need somebody. Uh, and, but what really I think got me the job was because I loved racing cars. And the boss guy was an ex-Nissan race car designer. Oh, interesting. So we just started talking. And then by the end of the thing, I mean, I could have just given him four blank images and he would have hired me it just because you kind of hit it off. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but you know, but then the, the, the senior artist was there too and said, okay, I guess he can do it. So I got hired. Um, but it was at that point, you know, and I was hired to do everything. You know, I got thrown into doing, you know, modeling, texturing, concept art, uh, uh, painting, uh, animation, you know, everything that in, that went into doing a game I had to do I had to learn right so that year and a half was like maybe 15 hour days my choice though my choice because I was like I gotta learn this I you know school didn't really prep me for this so I gotta learn this now so that was my first job and but it the lucky thing is in that first job I met some amazing people and you know this is another reason why I'm doing what I'm doing because, you know, when you meet these people and they help you, at some point down the line, you want to help other people. Um, and, and, I, well, I, and I think you should, you know, because this, this, this is information that should be, you know, handed out, you know, freely, you know, to people. So, you, so from that job, I, one of the bosses was Ron Cobb. I don't know if you know who Ron Cobb is, but... Ron Cobb uh, is a, like design stuff for Star Wars, The Abyss, um, Aliens. Uh, so he was really big time. I didn't even know this. But he was super nice, super cool guy. Uh, and he was one of the bosses. So I learned how to paint from him. Some, you know, some painting and design. Uh, and uh, another matte painter, Brian Flora, worked there. Uh, and he... You know, awesome map painter blew my mind. I was like, oh my God, you can do that? You know, so I, you know, a lot of really good mentors to begin with right off the bat. It's a really cool picture you're painting here of, of saying yes, of, of jumping in. And you were, you were in interior architecture school and took a single class in, in 3D and then and was able to seek out someone who, who could help you and connected you to take an interview. And then from an interview, you used your ability to connect with people and, and then dove in and found that. Yeah. And, and, you know, to preface this though, that first job, which is, this is the, this is the one thing that I don't think I, I don't think I've ever told anybody this, but when I took that one class, I was hooked on 3d. I was like, Oh, this is really cool. This is the future. Right. But back then, you know, 3D was at its sort of infancy, right? We're, we're talking like really clunky tools. But I, at that point, I, you know, now everybody's torrenting, grabbing stuff, demo of the software, no problem. Back then, 
the modem had just came out. Hmm. So I was like, okay, I was like, I like this thing, so I'm going to buy an Apple computer because that's what existed at that time. So I bought the first Power PC, 100 megahertz, hmm. and and I said, okay, and I put everything. I was in debt because of that computer. I, I still remember I was, I think I was eight thousand dollars in debt. Wow. And back then it was a lot, and, and because you know I got the big ass monitor, you know I got you know a printer, and I got the, the computer with the max what it could have, because I was like I'm going all in on this one. So I went all in, and I go okay, well I have no software. Hmm. Well, what am I gonna do? And and so I was like okay, somebody help me out here because I, I, you know it's not like you can just go and get a demo of it. That didn't exist, so I had to ask my instructors, and so fi- you know, finally I got you know sort of a shady version of a software because they like, well, we you know you try to install it for me and all this. Okay, so then it worked, but I had no manual, hmm. so I didn't know the program that well. So I had to go through all the buttons and see what they did. I literally sat there for days, but that's how interested I was in making this work. And I think one of the biggest things that's ever going to help anybody getting into the industry is how bad you want it and, you know, yeah. how are you going to go and do that, you know. And nowadays, the version of that is basically, you know, keep drawing, draw every day, do all this, you know, like whatever your discipline. But it takes a lot of hard work. You yeah. Know? Nothing is going to be handed to you. And, and following that curiosity and taking those opportunities as they come to you, when someone says, "Hey, I got a, I got a thing," and you dive in and you follow, yeah, 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 you, yeah, totally. you, you follow <laughs> your, exactly what happened to me. <laughs> and you know, I, mean, you, I didn't know. <laughs> and you, you followed your your passion, um, and you, you listened to yourself, and you listened when when excitement peaked in you, and then you went through that. And I'm sure many of those 15 hour days. Um, there were lots of times where you thought about turning back or doing something else or finding something new, and and but you followed with your your core instinct and you stayed true to the decision you had made to to shape your own destiny. Yeah, I mean, I loved where I was at, and I still remember him going, "Okay, uh, six hundred bucks a week." I'm like, "I'll take it." <laughs> Why don't you wait a second, think about it, and then I was like, "No, I'll take it," because I just I was like a job. And this sounds cool. Oh, yeah, I'm digging it. It's just sometimes you just have to listen to your gut. Yeah, like you said. Well, it's and, really important. And what year was this, you man? Oh, geez. Um, <laughs> We're going real. I, I, I want to say maybe somewhere in around 93, 4, something like that. Cool. So, yeah, there's, there's a, lot of, a lot of talk in the, in the chat room about pre-YouTube. Um, and, and Steve Teeps had said, uh, you know, it's, it was an it was interesting to say the least going through um, art school before uh, pre YouTube. You know, when because <laughs> nowadays yeah. there are there are so many cool resources, and this one where I, you know, I went through I went through art school but pre computers almost. <laughs> yeah. That's before my accident, which was in eighty nine, uh, I was already going to art center. And I think Photoshop one had just come out. Mm. You know, that's yeah. like I'm old. <laughs> I mean, but that's, that's, that's the old. <laughs> well, no, it's unbelievable, and it's so cool to 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 be at the start or at the 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 beginning or the blue ocean of of a of a growing industry. And I think that's really the thing we're seeing again today. You know, we're seeing technology now exploding with GPU and with um, with three D and the way three D is going and the way that YouTube and the internet has taken things and Twitch and all these different platforms, we're seeing a whole new wave. Um, and if you're just starting out um, or, you're, or you've been in the business only only a few years, um, you're at the the crest of, of a whole new coming of, of, of transition into the, the business. And I think it's it's really exciting to be in on the ground floor and to, to dive in and to be one of the, the first people to use 3D software to... to um, Find yourself in a job where you're like, hey, I don't, I don't really know what what we're doing because we're we're cutting the mold here. And together, through 15 hour days, I'm going to be a generalist or I'm going to do whatever it is I can to figure out how to get to the next space. Yeah, it's just that excitement. If you have that excitement and passion, it will lead you 
to places. As long as you're willing to work hard, uh, you know, what I want to do is try to help focus people because it's, um, it's heartbreaking when I'm talking to certain concept artists uh, who want to be concept artists and they, they, they tell you, hey, here's my portfolio. What do you think? And I'm like, but that, 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 that's, that, doesn't, that, ha- that has no bearing to what you say you want to do. Mm. You say, because, you know, somebody will show me, uh, you know, hey, I did a lot of pencil drawings and I want to be an architecture, uh, I want to design architecture for film. I'm like, well, how does that correlate? <laughs> and but, and I'll, I'll ask that person, I say, did you, what, you know, they said, well, I, we, I graduated art school just this past summer. And I'd be like, geez, okay, so you're not prepared for what you want to do. And I'll ask him, what do you want to do? And then he goes, well, I want to do this. And I, so we dissected it, and in the end, you find out it's not even what they want. Mm. So keep your eye on the prize and work hard, but you got to know, you know the process. You, know, you need to know what is it that you want to do so that you can really focus on it, you know? Mm. So it's just going all, you know, but, you know, going around is not a bad thing. Like, back to my, like, thing is, like, so I started in that company, Multimedia, uh, and for that year and a half, I learned a lot. I, I think I learned the most I ever learned mm. uh, from the talented artists, you know, the, the business of making a game. It was a Civil War game that he was making, and it, it was actually a really good idea. You know, we del- dove into history. We rebuilt the ships, you know, like we had blueprints of, you know, the ironclad ships, I mean, from the Civil War. Yeah. And it was really cool. Uh, learned a lot of stuff. And then the company kind of just went down because, you know, there was some kind of lawsuit and it's just kind of, you know, like these things happen. Mm-hmm. And then I was like, okay, well, what am I going to do? Now what am I going to do? So what you're going to find is that the, the relationship you make at work will help you if you are a good person mm. and if you are just, you know, if you're not just not an asshole really, you know, uh, and basically Brian Flora, the matte painter recommended me to work at Lucas learning. Uh, they were making a game. So I was like, okay, I'm going, I have no offers. I'm going <laughs> submitted my portfolio. They said, okay, fine. Um, and at that time my portfolio was already sort of, it was reasonably solid because I had worked so hard. Mm-hmm. to make it, you know, make it so. So I went there, and that's when I started with the Lucas family. You know, Lucas, but it was because of Brian Flora that I got that job, right? And, and, you, you, said, and you and Brian had worked on the Civil War game together. Yeah. And then he recommended you. To, tell us a little bit about what Lucas Learn is. So Lucas Learning is, it, at that time, it was, you know, a branch, you know, like Lucas Arts. They had Lucas Learning, was they were doing learning games. So yeah, uh, uh, so I was hired as a you know three D generalist mm. you know to work, and there was a lot of uh, there was actually a lot of concepting because it was like well we don't really know what this is but I kind of used three D draw you know, sketched you know stuff like that but it was basically making that game it was whatever we needed uh, you know all the way from concept lighting modeling asset making you know, anything. Like even animating, I was like, oh. <laughs> I didn't know how to animate, um, but I learned it, you know. And so it was all this stuff, and then I got thrown into, uh, you know, like Lucas has a real good, you know, infrastructure of like, oh, figure drawing, and you know, they they embrace a lot of things. We're right next to Lucas Arts, we're making some really cool games, and so it was a big family. Mm-hmm. Um, and I got introduced to people at the ranch, which is where I went on to next. Uh, so, you know, then I went from there to the ranch, and then from the ranch, I worked on episode one, uh, you know, you know, actually with George, you know, behind my shoulder, which was the scariest thing ever. Um, you, you, you turn into this, like, stone thing, you know. Like, he's like, well, why don't you move that over to the left a little bit? And you're like... Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and, 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 and then... <laughs> And then you're just like, you know how when you're really nervous, you just can't click the right mm-hmm. thing. He's like, you know what? I'll come back. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, and I was just like, oh, did I just screw this up? But, you know, that's where I met you know, Doug Chang. Uh, 
uh, who I would end up working for like 10 years later. Um, because at that time, I was I went to talk to Doug and I said, Doug, um, what's it going to take to work on the art team? Because I was at the ranch doing animatics, right? Mm-hmm. So it was a 3D uh, previs. And, and, and I would wander over to the, you know, like the, the real art team with the maquettes and, you know, the whole, all the art guys. Uh-huh. And I was like, like, Doug, what's it going to take to work here? And I would go right in this lunch hour. He's like got half a sandwich hanging out of his mouth going, uh, what? And I'm like, what's it going to take? What, what does it take? And he says, okay, well, go to that file cabinet and look at all the portfolios that I get uh, and look through them. Uh, those are the, the yes pile. So go through them. That's what it takes. Mm-hmm. And that's the kind of work you're going to need to mm-hmm. do. So I go through it. And I'm going, oh, okay, I'm never going to be in that art team. Because it's, you know, it's really top notch. But, you know, it kind of spurred me a little bit going, okay. I, I, I really like that, though. I really like the art team. I like the energy. You know, I like what they're doing, you know. A lot of really top notch guys there. So I was like, okay. So, but you're in the Lucas family. So some really I met more people at ILM. Go ahead. Oh, I just I want to point out some really cool things you're saying that I think can help anyone on their way um, going and, and voicing what you want, you know, and, and having the courage to go to the to the guy when you have the moment to be near the guy and saying, "Hey, look, this is what I'm trying to do. I need you to know that." And then and then finding and having him point you to um, the. The, the models and portfolios that you could you could then look at and emulate and say you know and everyone I think has that feeling of, of oh shit you know am I ever going to be like that we've talked about that so many times on the show I mean Spielberg famously talks about seeing Lawrence of Arabia and being like I'm never going to be a filmmaker yeah. and I, I think I mean he, it was unattainable at, at, from from where you from when you look up yeah, as a giant like, yeah I was like that's never going to happen and you know, persistent is important because, mm-hmm. and I'll, you know, I'll show you there are certain things with, within my, you know, how I did it that it was just, you know, I'm a very persistent person, but, but you got to be persistent, but not, um, how do I say it? But, um, don't be, uh, be respectful of people's time, Yeah. but be persistent because he, Doug never took lunch. He never went out to take lunch. Mm always ate at the office because he's just that kind of guy Mm -hmm. so for me to invade that privacy i knew i was doing that but i also knew that there was no other way yeah i went in there saying hey i'm sorry i need to ask this question this is a good time and he's told me many times no (laughs) okay i'll come back tomorrow (laughs) and at some point he clued in like i better tell this guy something because and to get him to shut up and leave rather (laughs) than to say I'm not free, he'll just come back tomorrow. Mm-hmm. So he, in the end, I mean, and I think in, in some way he appreciated that. Mm, I'm sure. And I will tell you that persistence got me a job with him ten years later. Yeah, I, I can't. So that you know, I, that's important. For persistence, and you were you were prepared, and you were patient. Uh, I was patient. I was not prepared. <laughs> Um, I mean, I was prepared later on because after 10 years, you learn what you need to know. But when I talked to him, I wasn't prepared. Mm. No idea. I was like, God, okay. And as you go through the years, you start learning what is necessary. And I think it's, there's a lot of small little tricks you can do um, to really make that grow faster. Mm -hmm. I think a lot of times people just, you know, they, they, they grow slower because they don't have the right information. Mm, totally. And that's the reason why the reason for this talk is to give you the right information. It's not to teach you how to do it because that's your own learning, but it's to give you the right information so that you can be laser focused on what you need to learn. And then the time shrinks instead of taking three years, it might just take one because you know what to learn. It's like learning a new piece of software, right? If I sat down and I'll tell anybody, if you want to learn a piece of software, give me a day, I can teach you that software. You'd, you'll be good. But it's only because I'm teaching you specific buttons you need to press. So if I was teaching you that, like, let's say you use Final Cut Pro and this is just these five buttons you needed to know. But you didn't know you need to know these five buttons. 
So now you're looking at the manual, trying to learn tutorials, learning every button, and it's taking you two weeks before you go, I only needed these five. Mm -hmm. But if the first day I said, just learn these five, you'd be off and running. So, but either way, you get there. And the software analogy is a really cool one for this show because you're not teaching, you're not saying what to do with the buttons. You're just showing how the buttons work. You know, here's how, th here's how yeah. this tool works. And now you paint your own picture with it. Exactly, exactly. And, but, you know, to get that out of the way, it's not an easy thing. And a lot of people, I think, they just kind of wander. Mm. You know, like, like if they need to go a certain place in a map, you know, let's say they need to get to San Jose and they live in San Francisco. Uh, first of all, they don't even need to, they, they don't even know they need to go to San Jose. Mm -hmm. So they're kind of wandering around going, oh, this is nice. But when they know they need to get to San Jose, then they go, okay, well, what kind of transit do I, you know, do I drive? Which will be faster. Do I walk? Which will take you days. But either way you get there, uh -huh. you just have to choose your path, you know. So I think giving them an option and a clue as to what's the path is good. Um, so yeah, so that that's the Lucas family. And then after the ranch, I went to ILM. Yeah. Um, because I also met people at ILM. I said, okay, uh, I took the skills that I knew, which was modeling. Uh, texturing, and they gave me a role there, uh, you know, to model and texture, you know, for films. And I was like, I'm in films, yes. <laughs> Finally, I'm, you know, I am there, you know, doing, you know, I'm kind of inching towards what I want, which is to create. At that time, I didn't really know, but it was to create compelling images. Mm. I didn't, you know, I didn't. I, I was a decent draftsman, but not really great. Not good enough to be in Doug's pile of good mm -hmm. so I could never get a job being a, you know like a draftsman painter kind of person so I said well I'm going to use 3D as an in so I got into ILM again met more people a lot more people they had an awesome math department bumped into Brian Flora there again uh, you know and then that's where I met you know some of my mentors now like George Hall that's where I met George mm -hmm. we were all in a trailer working on Frankenstein like, it never came out, but I would be in the previous 3D side of the trailer, which is right here. There, right here, it's like five feet, so I walk across there. Then it's George Hall, Ryan Church in his first job at ILM, Eric Tiemens, Bill Perkins. So it was just like uh -huh. uh, Ian McKay. So it's just like, oh, my God. It, but at that time, you don't know that they're superstars like that. You go in there, it's just the guys. They're just shooting the shit. They're just Ryan Church is like this, just this skinny guy from our center, and super fun. And we used to just go to lunch every day <laughs> and just ah, just talk, you know, uh, talk outside in the sun. It was just great, and you know, that's how I got to know super nice guys. Uh, but um, you know, I being there really helped. I think it's important to keep in perspective that you know when we when we go through a, a bio like this, we we take you know, thirty minutes and we're talk, but we're talking about a decade here or, or more, you know, of, of time that it's of, that it took you from day in day out, um, putting in the work and making making long deep relationships with people um, and creating a life, not just a not just a, a moment in time. And now you're at ILM, and so we're we're talking about you know at least a decade at this point, right? So now we're in the early 2000s? Oh, God. I, yeah, I guess something like that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I, I, I'm really bad with dates. Uh, <laughs> but, you know, at this point, yeah, something like that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, probably six, seven years. Uh, and then ILM, I was there for maybe a couple years. Mm -hmm. uh, but, you know, a, a lot of this, you know, it, I... I thought yesterday when we were talking, I was like, well, maybe we'll just skimp over the, the, the <laughs> history part. But, you know, when we talk about it, there's actually a lot there to, to you know, because uh, I just, I want people to, ha you know, learn from, you know, what my successes and mm. my failures and uh, maybe try to focus themselves a little bit more. Um, can, but ILM, yeah, I was there for a couple of years, and can then I, can uh, I ask? Can I ask how you and George became friends? So, so the thing is with me and George is that you know we hung out, but not a lot. I mean, I actually hung out with Ryan the most. Mm. 
So it was me and Ryan, and then Ian would be there running around, you know, <laughs> like with his high energy, and and we would all go to lunch. But you know, at that time, we just kind of knew each other. We chatted, you know. I would, you know, me being me, I would always I talk to every artist, and I go, oh, "How did you do that? How did you, you know?" I'm always like that. Curious. And so, but that was the extent of the friendship. It was only until after. I mean, this, this is years later. I'm jumping forward years later. I worked at Image Movers, um, and we found out the place was closing. And I was like, you know what? I got to go freelance. I, yeah, I got to try it. And that was almost, that was like eight, nine years ago. And I gave George a call. I just said, hey, George, I know, you know, I know you're you know, in the you know, Bay Area. I know you're freelancing. I know you're in this union. So can you tell me more? Mm-hmm. And George being George is super cool and, you know, told me all, you know, he basically took me under his wing and just said, hey, here's what it's going to take, you know, I'll help you when I can. Mm -hmm. And he actually got me sort of my first gig. Mm -hmm. Uh, And, you know, he was just, he would just keep helping me. I worked for him for a while. Mm -hmm. Um, And, you know, that's how we became really friends, Mm -hmm. you know. And then, you know, through the years, we just, you know, now we just hang out every month, every couple of weeks, we go out to lunch and just chat, you know, yeah. and have fun with each other. But I mean, that that relationship, basically, but it was like from way back. But, I, you know, at the ILM days, uh, I, you know, like I said, I talked to Ryan way more than I did George. Mm. And the funny thing is, George is like, we're good friends now. So. Yeah. That's that's an awesome friendship. So then let's mentorship. let's let's go back to ILM because I think this is such a, a fun moment in your in your your time in your incubation after after Frankenstein and that project went when its when its direction ran its course. Um, where where did you go next, and how did that how did that work for you at ILM? So ILM, you know, I was there commercials, and then I did Frankenstein, and then I and then I transitioned to sort of. Uh, uh, working on like films like Perfect Storm, Space mm-hmm. Cowboys, you know, like yep. I was just doing like modeling, texturing. I was like, you know what? I like this matte painting thing. I like that. I want to do that, you know, because I had been exposed to it already from Brian Flora. So I was like, hey, I'm gonna go matte paint. And then, and then this is another, you know, funny story because there was a guy named Yusei at ILM, and he's the guy who painted the sort of the Die Hard, you know, Die Hard 2, the end scene where there's mm-hmm. all these jets and all this, you know, when you go into ILM, if you ever visit it, you'll see his big ass map. This is really, really good. And he's a, you know, he's the top, one of the top guys there. And I was like, okay, okay. Uh, and, but he's super grumpy. So he doesn't want to talk to you. So I'm like, hey, hi. He's like, oh, no, 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 no. no. And, I, and then so I'm like, oh, God, okay. So I didn't realize, because I played table tennis, I, there was a ping pong table and he liked to play. So I was like, oh, okay. So, you know, I kind of, you know, I would play it down a little bit, you know, it's kind of <laughs> making a little closer game and chat a little bit, you know, and we got to be friends that way. A really, was, imp- a really important point, p- part of this story. Um, if you guys do not know, E-Man was on Team USA's table tennis team. Um, so when he says he, he was down playing uh, his his table tennis ability with you say, um, I I can imagine what a what an interesting way to take a, another passion and a, a passion from a different part of your life and and have that connection with one of the best in your field um, and be able to spend that time together. Yeah, I, it, it was funny because I was just like, oh, okay, this is working out for me because you know we have similar interests, and uh, but he was still really grumpy, but he was just. <laughs> He, he, okay, so what he was, he was still grumpy. I would bring my paintings. So now I'm doing matte paintings at home and I'm going, what do you think? So that got me in the door to, he'll tell me what he thinks. No, too much, too little detail. Go fix. Uh Um, Okay. So, you know, five days later, I come back with the matte painting, another matte painting. Oh, too much details, <laughs> you know, like, but he, you know, but as, as he gave feedback, he gave a little bit more mm-hmm. and a little bit more. And so I'm like, okay, I'm learning. And then you meet more people. Like now you're talking to the matte painters. So there was another guy named Evo Horvath who, who basically is doing what I'm doing now, 
but he, there was no YouTube then. So he sat me down with a guy named Susumu, who works at uh, who you know, who works at Iowa, and he um, and he said, "Okay, guys, I'm going to explain to you what exposure is for film, and this is how why map paintings, how map paintings, what you need to do, blah 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 blah." And he basically gave us a class on. So, but but there's no YouTube, right? So no recording, mm-hmm. but. This is basically what he did, and and I think when you get exposed to that, you you kind of go, well, it's my turn to do that, you know. Mm-hmm. But at ILM, that's what happened. So then I you know went and did all that, and I said, God, I really want to do matte painting now, but I wasn't good enough. I really wasn't. So I needed practice. It's funny. Arthur goes, we learned we need table tennis skills to become good at concept art. And that's, that's exactly yeah. what we're doing. Oh, and, and also learn how to eat Japanese food really good. Because that's what you say. He loved this one Japanese place that <laughs> I love too. So that's another thing we had in common. I think that's really the key is, is it doesn't matter what it is, but um, so much of your story is, is predicated upon building deep relationships and finding common ground with people, whether that's table tennis or sushi or um, spending spending time out in the in you know in the lunch break room with Ryan, you know finding ways that you can um, connect with people not just around the the tiny detail of, of the work you're doing, but in other parts of your life has helped guide and build builds deep relationships that um, that you can grow and live and enjoy well, this you know, journey. A, a very simple thing is you can do this now online too. Like, don't think that you have to be, you know, sort of geographically where that guy is and where he works. I mean, this has happened to me where I've met some people online and I say, hey, nice to meet you. And then we kind of talk about something. We hit it off. We talk. And, and, you know, th- this is how I got into work on Star Citizen is I just started talking to Chris Olivia, and, and, who was the art director at the time, just, you know, randomly. Uh, you know, online, and we're just talking, talking, hey, you know, this guy's funny. Mm -hmm. And then, you know, and we're both like, you know, hitting it off, but you're not doing it with the intention of getting a job. Mm -hmm. You're doing it to go, hey, is a fellow human being? Sounds cool. Hey, let's just chat, you Mm -hmm. know, just like you would at any whatever place. And after a while, he goes, hey, I didn't even know you did that work. Oh, you want to work on Star Citizen? All right. I didn't even know what Star Citizen was, to be honest with you. You know, I think I, I, I really want to emphasize that because I think in today's era with the immediacy of the internet, we skip over the fact that like life is happening along the way. And that, that the important part is not just can I get to the next step? The important part is can I can I be alive here today? And in through that, you can build deep, meaningful relationships that eventually, you know, may or may not lead to something. But if you can live in in the moment, as 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 they say, or you if you can if you can play table tennis with you say to play table tennis with you say, um, and take those opportunities as they as they are for what they are, um, you can really find really yeah. amazing things come out of them. We see it. Those are the moments, and, and be genuine. Yeah, we be see. Sure, it. Don't go with. You know, with a pre, you know, like with some kind of agenda, you know, like I'm going to target this, that, you know, like mm-hmm. don't do that. Just, just be genuine. You know, you're if you like the person, they'll like you. And that's really the thing is, is not everyone is going to like you, and you're not going to like everyone. But there are yeah. people out there that you're going to build and find really great people. But you have to be willing to put yourself out there. And we see it in the chat all the time. We see, um, or you know, in the contest, we or on Instagram. I, I see this. I love seeing this when. Two artists um, have linked up because of of Instagram or because of one of the contests or because of the chat. You see them interacting with each other outside of the show or outside of a contest and working together and finding new ways for them. Um, you know, because the, because the artists in the chat. I mean, within this single show, there's probably 35 countries represented here, and people would never have run into each other geographically except. That, they're, that the internet has allowed them to connect. And, and by putting yourself out there and being um, a, a, a persistent human being and a, and, a, um, and a communicative one and one who's willing to take the risk of, of connecting with someone, you can find really great things happen all the time. Like, um, so far, we've heard so many of, of your jobs have, in so many of the awesome projects you worked on in that first 
10, 15 years that we're talking about. Yeah, and I, you know, this, you know, on upcoming episodes, I'll also be talking about, you know, like all these jobs so far right now have been in-house. And, you know, there's a big, you know, a lot of people ask that now, you know, in-house versus freelance. I mean, and I have a lot of thoughts on that. But, you know, that's some things that I will also talk about in depth because, you know, so far, you know, I'm at ILM, it's in-house. There's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, it's immediate, you know, you, you, you see the person, you go and talk to them like you were just talking about, it's just right there, you know, uh, versus, you know, online is still a little bit detached, but, you know, there are pros and cons. Sure. Um, you know, like on my next job after ILM, I went to Sony to become sort of this, uh, I don't know, environment lead, you could say, on a, on a game uh, for the PS2, and I met sort of one of my best friends there to, to this day. I mean, he was you know, one of my best friends and mm-hmm. uh, he was my lead, you know, he was the art director. Um, and it was just four years of fun. <laughs> yeah. It's fun. I pulled my friends in, you know, people I was helping and it was just, we built a team that was just fun. Yeah. We were there at four in the morning, just laughing it up. You know, it was hard too, but it was fun. Um, but that's where I really, uh, said, okay, you know, I really get this film thing and go. I was at Sony for four years and I said, you know what, I gotta, I, I just, I have to do the film thing. So then, guess who's getting me my next job? Brian Flora. <laughs> at the Orphanage, which is this uh, film, visual effects company uh, in the Bay, and I, I went there and uh, as a map painter uh, slash concept designer and you know, because basically in visual effects, you, you kind of have to wear both hats. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, first thing I was thrown into was already doing concepts and then doing, you know, map paintings. And, you know, Brian was like helping me, and teaching me, mentoring me. Uh, it was just crazy. Those those times at our orphanage was like, that's when I'm, you know, I mean, I'm always just learning, but that was like, wow. <laughs> because I had to do a shot. I was like, oh, I don't know how to do this <laughs> Did you experience in those moments of like extreme learning curve, did you experience a lot of growing pain? Well, you, you experience a lot of self-doubt. Mm. Uh, you know, growing pain, yes, for sure. It's like anything, right? You learn something, you know, you, you wonder if you're doing the right thing. You, you realize, the more you learn, the more you realize you're not there. Mm. You're like, oh, God. Like, because now you really understand what this is. But you also know, like, oh, my God. That's genius. I can't. Oh my god! I can't. But you know, you get a lot of that, or you do a matte painting, and you know, like I've had, uh, I've done matte paintings where, uh, you know, you come in in the morning and uh, it's been taken over by, by your lead, and oh. he's repainted it, and you're like, "What's up, man? You know, you got yeah. the chip on your shoulder. What's up? This is not cool, you know. And you got the chip on your shoulder. You're, you know, and he says, "Well." You, you didn't do it. You didn't look good. So I, that's my job to step in to finish it up. And so, you know, you, okay, forget the chip on your shoulder. Okay. What, what I did, what did I, how can I do it better? Mm -hmm. Um, And then, so you kind of learn and then you slowly get better and better. Your eye increases, you get better and better, you know, you learn new techniques. So, you know, that's, that's really what happened in those times. But, you know, there were a lot of low times when you come in and you go, oh, I really messed up, I guess, if you had to repaint my image. Mm. Um, how in those, in those tough times, how do you, how do you stay, stay the course? How do you stay positive? How do you, um, how do you keep yourself? I think, I think at the orphanage, I, I didn't stay positive mm. um, for a while. Um, I, I actually was very, you know, I was like, oh, my lead's terrible. Mm. jobs terrible uh i was going through a divorce you know and mm-hmm. I was like, everything was just like shit mm-hmm. and then at some point you realize well nobody wants to work with an asshole you know who's always miserable mm-hmm. so i think at that point i go uh, i don't want to be like that anymore so then i just kind of said okay i'm just going to be you know i'm just going to just not be like that mm-hmm. you know and that's when you know i actually started getting a lot better but mm. i think um I think later on, you know, when I really started getting into table tennis and training, I really learned how to sort of pick yourself up, you know, from 
mm-hmm. falling mm-hmm. and just go, you know what? Okay. It's in the, it's in the past now. You just got to keep moving on, just keep moving on, you know, because we have the thing in table tennis where it's like, well, you lost that game. Those points aren't coming back and you can get all pissed off about that game or you can play the next game mm-hmm. and try your best again. Like, but if you keep thinking about that game, you won't do good this game. Right. So, you know, that's one of those things where I learned that, you know, and it kind of is sticking with me more, you know. But uh, at the orphanage, I was still trying to figure it out. Yeah. It was, it was, you know, I was going through bouts of, it was everybody else's fault. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Not mine. <laughs> Can't be my fault. It's their fault, you know. And then in the end, you go, all right, it's mine. <laughs> and then you know you just kind of move on you have to forgive yourself man I mean you know like you can make mistakes so just move on because um, it, it was funny because I, I, I got to be a handful at the orphanage and Brian Flora left the orphanage to go work with Doug and I remember a couple of years later I would ping Brian and say hey I'm thinking of coming to I would like to work with Doug and Brian's like are you still difficult to work with? <laughs> and I'm like, well, I can't really answer that, but <laughs> I do realize I was difficult <laughs> because I was a handful. Man. Yeah. He, you know, I was, a, I was a handful and, and I get that because I really understood that when I became a lead man mm-hmm. uh, or Matt supervisor. And, and, and I was like, wow, some of these guys are really hard to deal with. <laughs> yeah. And, but you learn because, and then now you understand where they are and you can sort of talk to them in different ways and try to figure out how to get their head straight. But you, now you know what Brian was going through. Yeah. <laughs> wow, such a difficult guy, you know? It's an interesting flip in the mind to, to go from, to make the choice of, of blaming everyone else and, and spinning yourself in a negative spiral or to make the choice of no, I'm just I'm going to make this I'm going to make this a different way, and it, I'm I'm sure you know as you, as you say I bet the in the times of the negative spiral it sort of continues you know what what you throw your energy towards will continue, and if you throw your energy towards a negative spiral it continues down until you pull yourself out of it. Yeah, and and the truth is you know a lot of this stuff that we're talking about, a lot of people might be like, well, that's not we're not talking about concept art here. You know, like how to, this is actually the deeper stuff. If you have this, you'll make it in any field. Mm. It won't matter if it's concert bar, table tennis, car driving. Well, I don't care what you want to do. If you apply the right principles, you're going to make it in anything. You do. Oh. That's the key. I think, you know, a lot of people don't, yeah. don't understand. But, well, and I, I love, yeah, I, anyway. I think that's a, a great place for us to, to go where we're, we're going. Um, Talking about the the core foundational principles is a really amazing thing to to say. That's that that'll be what we're going to explore over the course of this show. And um, I know we've we've said we're gonna this will be an hour long show, so we're buttoned right up to our hour mark today. But this show will continue on the third Tuesday of every month. Um, and Eman, do you want to uh, share your screen and maybe we can break down a little bit of of what we're what we're going to be talking about in weeks to come. Sure. Um, E-Man, of course, has had a very uh, insanely awesome career. He's worked on, you know, all the all the big movies you can think of. Um, you think I'll, I'll throw his IMDb in the chat if you don't know, um, but you know, all the big Marvel movies and, and uh, you, you name it, he's he's been there. We're going to explore a career through that and um, hopefully look looking at these deeper principles um, along the way. So yeah, and, and, and for those of you who don't know who who I am or my work, uh, just go on our station and go on whatever, uh, you know, you'll, you'll see it, you know, um, and you can see if that's something that interests you in terms of like uh, getting advice from somebody who does that. But I, uh, I was thinking, you know, at least for the first two episodes, uh, episode one is to completely break down film, uh, you know, all the different phases in film, uh, you know, what, I will be giving examples of what the art should be, uh, what it should look like, what are the things to be expected, who are you going to be working with, probably, most probably, you know, director, art director, production designer, um, and then also talking about the union, which is a very big deal 
about uh, uh, you know a lot of people who want to work in film still need to be in the film union and how does that work? Uh, and I think uh, a lot of people is it again another really nobody really talks too much about it. Um, uh, some people talk about it here and there, but I want to be very specific. Um, and in regards to uh, uh, second episode, is the same thing, but for games. Uh, and what are some of the differences between the two things? Uh, where do they cross over? Uh, you know, things like that. Mm -hmm. uh, and so that would be f the first two episodes. I mean, I have others planned, obviously. But, you know, it, it also depends on uh, what a lot of the viewers are wanting, mm -hmm. you know. Because uh, you know, I, I was going to do ones on, you know, like uh, freelancers versus in-house. Definitely going to do one on social networking and how to put your work out there. And also rates. Yeah. What can you expect to make from this living? Yeah. Like, you know, like what are the ranges, you know, and, and what you should and shouldn't do. Uh, and where you can, you know, this is not secret information on what a rate, your rate should be. It should not be secret. Uh, and the less secret we make it, uh, the more uh, the studios will have nothing on you because everybody knows the rates. Mm. You're not going to get screwed, you know? Yeah. So that's some of the stuff I, I was thinking of talking about. Um, yeah, this is this is going to be so fun and such a, an awesome ongoing ride that we we get to do together. Thank you, um, Eman, for for putting this together and, and bringing your your effort and your energy and your experience to the table. I think um, along the way here, we're going to get to um, I'm really excited to dive deeper into some of the very specific instances um, where that were learning points and where some of your Personal, personal principles developed along the way and look at these case studies of um, such such an amazing career so far um, and get to look at how some so many of these projects got made and, and really explore what is a concept artist and how does concept art function um, in today's world. Yeah, well, I'm looking forward to uh, giving you guys all that information and, you know, feel free also to, uh, I don't know, do they have a place to put... Uh, questions or you know just questions but suggestions to what they really want because we you know we might just kind of uh, uh, you know take it into consideration because if everybody is asking for a certain thing maybe we'll pull that up earlier sure uh, I, but I don't know is there a place well, they can do that? definitely so of course in the chat for here um, but as JD Hilliard just chimed in um, on the discord um, our discord channel we, we are going to be making a thread for this show. Um, and JD, uh, well, actually, Arthur just threw in the um, uh, threw in the invite to the Discord. If you're not on our Discord, um, that is how from week to week on this show, um, everyone keeps up. It's also a really amazing community that uh, JD Hilliard and the the rest of the gang has has pushed forward. You can um, get all kinds of cool feedback on your work um, and communicate and learn about all sorts of stuff. So the Discord it will be the place. Um, for this show where you can throw in your suggestions, ask questions, um, get feedback about um, around the business side of, of concept art. Um, yes, yeah, so on the, on the Discord there, um, and you can also engage with us on social media if you want. On Instagram, you can put in the comments of uh, the poster of this show. Sweet. Yeah, um, so. That, that is our, our time today. Um, thank you all in the chat so much for being here with us. Um, yeah, thanks, guys, for being here. <laughs> please uh, tune in. These videos will kick out before um, before next month. This video will kick out to um, YouTube, and it will also live on um, kibash3d.com in the video section. Um, and then next month, we will pick this up on the third Tuesday. Um, where we will dive in and really start taking a look at um, concept art for film. Sweet, awesome, Can't everybody! Wait. Thank you for uh, for joining us. Oh, I want to I want to plug. Let's let's go out on one thing. Um, today is a really special day for mm. us over here at um, at Kip Ash and, and We Are Fuzzy. Um, we just put out our new trailer for our video game um, coming to Nintendo. Um, so I'd love to leave on this note um, if you guys are interested check out our trailer 
here. Why don't you play the trailer here and leave with that? Yeah, bingo. Um, so here it comes. This is uh, this is the new Sleep Tight trailer. Um, thanks everyone for for being here. Every parent tells their child that the monsters aren't real. But how come every kid has the same story? <laughs> <laughs>